Running commentary. We are exploring listening to albums. It is a lost art form. We took an hour out of our day. We switched off the phones. We switched off the computers. We did not answer the door. We sat down and we listened to the artist's vision and concept. The La La Land soundtrack. So let's tr start with the track listing. We have Another Day of Sun, which I've sort of snapshotted as an memorable ensemble piece. Actually, it was a sunny day yesterday, and to hear this song, as an opening to the movie, see, here's the thing. If you've seen the movie, the song by itself really works, but the visual attachment that you have between song and the movie is really important here. You know, the movie is... They're on a crowded highway. It's bumper to bumper traffic. And they all then decide to jump on the hoods of their cars and start singing a song or leaning out of windows. And from there, we see the stars of the movie, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Um, someone in the crowd sounds like a Spice Girls song, you know, and this is kind of ties in with the themes of the four girls from the movie when they are dancing around in the apartment singing this song. It sort of ties in with that sensibility. Mia and Sebastian's theme is a touching instrumental. You're gonna hear this song throughout the movie. Um, it is, it's soundtracking, isn't it? It's scoring. It's, it's having some music which matches a visual and touches on their story and makes their story important. I have to believe but the movie was written around the songs, kind of. I kind of have to believe that because the story, such as it is, is a good story. It's a decent story, but it's about the music in this movie. This is a musical. This is the soundtrack to an American musical. And you think of the other musicals, American musicals. You think of Chicago. You think of Greece. You think of Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Well, the musical director, um, for the film is Marcus de Vries, who had worked on both Moulin Rouge and Romeo and Juliet with Baz Luhrmann. And his touch here, those movies for me, if I think of Moulin Rouge, I don't really, I'm not so familiar with Romeo plus Juliet, but in Moulin Rouge, I remember the music actually moving me to tears. I really thought that the, the musical score in Moulin Rouge made the movie succeed. And this is certainly also the case in La La Land. And I think that we have to give credit to Marcus de Vries here for his musical direction in really understanding how the music works together with the visual, which is, of course, why it was hired for the project. A Lovely Night is Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling sing their way through this duet. They're kind of, in the movie, sort of sizing each other up with this song. They're at the top of this hill. It's very romantic. I kind of relate to this scene in the movie. It's that magic moment when you are with that someone special and you are at the top of the hill overlooking, you know, the vista of the city beyond and you're the only people there and a mosquito's biting your ankle and a firefly's in your purse and you get the feeling, you know, we've all been there. I hope that we've all been there, actually. And if you've not been there, try and get yourself one of those moments because they are pretty fantastic. And here in, this is what this song is all about. It's about that magic moment when you wind up with someone special at the top of the hill with an incredible vista or by the boardwalk. You understand what I'm saying. Um, we have Herman's Habit, which is a muted trumpet instrumental sort of coffee house classic. This is something that would play while you're in line at Starbucks collecting your iced latte and you'd be out the door and you really wouldn't think about it again. It's not doing any harm, but it's not really doing anything of any significance for me. City of Stars, which is the award-winning, Academy Award-winning song from the album, uh, has Ryan Gosling singing this with a short reflective of the Oscar. And, you know, this ties in with the movie because there is a sort of a mature black couple on the boardwalk and he serenades the woman with this song. And then the, the, the gentleman, uh, the, the woman's husband kind of snatches her back and walks her off down the boardwalk. A good, again, it's the visual representation here. And if you care about the movie and you care about what's happening with the movie, then these songs are going to matter. My relationship with this movie is that I got to enjoy it completely by myself. 
um, in a movie theater in Forest Hills, Queens, where they didn't sell hot dogs, and so I had popcorn and cherry coke and sour patch things like I like. And I sat there and I enjoyed center stage this movie all by myself in Forest Hills. Um, it's true, it's one of those movie theaters where I could hear what was going on in the action theater next door a little bit, like when the music went down, but still, this this is what made La La Land really sing to me in its own unique way, and then stepping out of the theater at the end and there's not a single car around and it's this sort of Americana theater. There was something really wonderful about La La Land, which is why I decided that I, I wanted to review it. Start of Fire is, um, the song that John Legend is billed as a John Legend song. It stands alone as a contemporary nod to today's music scene. It has a live vibe to it, and it's pretty good. Um, we have then Planetarium, which is, I absolutely love this. This is just, it takes various parts of what's happening in the rest of the soundtrack and presents them in this orchestral theme with pizzicato nods and jazz nods. It sort of goes through these different genres and styles to present this instrumental collage of what else is happening on the album and ties in with the movie when they are actually at the planetarium and they actually levitate and take off and there they are hand in hand in this Hollywood time capsule. Um, so that's what Planetarium is. Summer Montage Madeline is sort of fluttering. Summer Montage Madeline is not really grabbing me that much. I'm not thinking of that so much. Then we have the City of Stars duet, where the song that we've heard already from Ryan Gosling on the boardwalk, they now are performing together as a couple. And again, they have the sensibility to have the female doing that kind of laughing thing that girls do when they're sort of like a little bit nervous or find the situation funny. But they keep that on the recording and I think that they, you know, they're both laughing and I like the dynamic and the, and the direction of the music, that courage to say, yeah, let's, let's kind of laugh as we're singing this because if couples were singing, they would actually laugh as they did this. I thought this was really good musical direction. Um, engagement party, you know, maybe I have, is a reprise again. So there's a lot of reprises going on. So you have to really like, if you don't like what's going on musically to begin with, you're not going to like this album. Because there's a lot of reprises and flashbacks and sort of variations on a theme called other things. So they've retitled a lot of stuff, which you kind of have to do for marketing. Then you have Audition, The Fools Who Dream, which was also an Oscar nomination, which Emma Stone sings, and I think is just an absolute beauty. And if I'm honest with you, there's part of me that wishes that this song had won the, the Oscar because you have to remember that the part that Emma Stone plays in the movie is as an actress that is going through all these kind of auditions and kind of being, you know, they ignore her. We go, go going through all the things that as artists we go through, not just actors, as singers. And if you go to a singer or the record company and you're trying to play a song and the man's phone keeps ringing or, you know, they keep taking phone calls or someone keeps coming in and interrupting them. It's like, this is your chance to get noticed and you keep getting interrupted by other people who are already there. You actually want to put your hands around their throat and strangle them. You want to kill them. And so when she actually gets to sing her audition piece without interruption and without other people nickety knackety newing all over her, all over her template, which is what so ha often happens in this business. This is what makes this movie so magical is the artists actually get a chance to be uninterrupted, to not keep, oh, so, oh, Instagram, oh, Facebook, oh, Twitter, oh. Sometimes you have to pay attention. And when you keep like flitting, 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 people just want to strangle you because you're not paying them any attention. And I think that this song really captured how annoying it is <laughs> that people have a, like a two second attention span and think that that's fabulous. That's what they're doing. There's, it's, there's no attention span. You're not fabulous. You're really annoying. 
and you're not getting anything achieved because you've got 20 things on the boil and they're all boiling over. You're not cooking anything successfully. That is what this song is about. Audition, the fools who dream. I'm a fool who dreams. There's so many of us out there are fools who dream. We actually dream that someone's gonna recognize us and they're gonna take our work seriously. They're gonna listen to us, they're gonna hear us, and they're gonna see the essence of the person. And I think that this song really achieved that. Epilogue is a medley of the film's most vivid musical moments. Now we've come across this before. Um, the end is the end. It's just this little piece of music which happens. It's a soundtrack, it's the movie soundtrack. And we haven't reviewed one of these before, so please forgive me if the way I'm doing this is uh, a little strange, but we have, and the last thing you hear is City of Stars humming. Emma Stone ends the album with an acoustic version of City of Stars where she's just humming it. So here we have Ryan Gosling's done a short version, they've done a duet, and now she's doing a solo version humming. Um, totally fine with me. I think it's a great song. This was a breath of fresh air melodically and orchestrally. Its heart emanated sunshine, and I think in today's popular music scene, that has to be applauded. Um, the La La Land soundtrack reached number two on the American album charts and number one on the UK album charts, which actually shocked me. That really shocked me that you guys in England thought that this was a number one album, and I can see why. You know, it was released on Interscope Records, the movie, of course, was subject to the embarrassing kerfuffle involved with its incorrect announcement as Best Picture in the um, Academy Awards of this year. Uh, the Academy Award wound up going to the movie Moonlight, um, but it was announced that La La Land had won the Best Picture. The cast of the movie go up to collect the award only to find out that there's been a boo-boo. And in today's day and age, there's something about it. I wonder if the furore surrounding that kerfuffle would have been different had the tables turned, had they had Moonlight go up and collect the best picture, and La La Land was actually announced as the best picture, I'm just wondering what might have happened. I think there's an incredible double standard in today's society. And I am proud, to, I'm actually glad that that kerfuffle happened. And I'm glad that I got to sit here and think about the country that we live in today. Because this album represents such a majority of the sunshine and heart of suburbia of America, the happy-go-lucky spirit of so many of American citizens. I really believe that this album um, was so necessary for the spirit of us, of, of so many of us who are undernourished by the pap and drivel that we are subjected to in today's day and age in the name of being cool. I can't think of anything worse than being cool. It usually means that someone gets to be an asshole and the rest of us suffer. For this reason, I award the La La soundtrack album 84%.